Time now for our weekly League of Ireland discussion. And uh, for the first time, joining me this week uh, this is former Finn Harps player, Michael Funston. Good to see you, Michael. You're welcome to Highland Radio. Cheers, Austin. Thanks for having me. Uh, another busy weekend of, of games to come, Michael, in the League of Ireland Premier Division. Uh, full schedule on Friday. There's a full schedule to come as well on uh, Monday evening. And Harps at home, and then they go on the road. Before we look at those matches, uh, Michael, as I said, it's the first time I've had you on. What have you made of Harps overall this season? Uh, Harps have been excellent this season. They've kind of been a surprise package for everybody in the sense that, you know, they won't be surprised and they still dominate in their set plays and, they, you know, they focus on that. Once they get you in, they don't let you out. But it's, it's a quality that's always brought into the squad. It's been, uh, it's been not surprising, but it's, it's surprising the way it's hit the ground running. You know, and it's at, you know it was credit to him. He kept the nucleus of last year's squad, you know, twenty twenty squad, and you know, twenty one his attitude, and you know, obviously with Adam, <laughs> no banging in the goals again, gives them a real chance. And you no, know, Karen Sullivan stepped up to the plate. So, uh, you know, it's been a, a really bright start. They played some really good uh, football. Barry back to me, there's ticking on nicely. He, He's been playing kind of really well, and as the man says, like doing that dirty side of the game really well, and he's working hard. But in the last three or four weeks, he started to come under where we see Barry in that number 10 role dropping in, and just, you know, obviously for the goal in Derry. And his goal last week was top notch. And, you know, hopefully that's Barry building nice momentum as we get in, like, you know, as we've done the first round of fixtures. So hopefully it's kind of all go, going well that way. Yeah, and it's interesting when I was talking to you beforehand uh, in the lead up to doing this, uh, Michael, you, you had mentioned that you come away from a result against Dundalk and you're disappointed not to beat them at, at Finn Park last week. Yeah, I was. Again, I had to check myself actually because I was uh, after the game, I was kind of, you know, giving out. Jesus, how did we lose that game? And then I had to say, well, hold on a minute here. You know, maybe it's just obviously the way the game went, but, you know, Harps dominated that first half. Obviously, Dundalk with their quality kept. Uh, took people off the bench and they threw the kitchen sink at it to try to get a result. But Harps were, were, were more than capable of actually stealing the one at the, in the end, you know, of the, of the second half. And it's, you know, it's a credit to Ollie and Higsey and the players to where they've got them that, you know, you're playing Dundalk. Or, or okay, they aren't uh, in the position they were last year, but they're, they're still the same squad pretty much of 2020 so like you know these are a serious talented uh, group of players yes they're lacking uh confidence and you know yourself the human factor that's what people forget when they do a bit of pundry you have to always take the human factor in but harps were more than good for their draw last week and as i said as a harps fan I had to check myself i was spitting fire we didn't actually win the game so no that shows you we're in a good place yeah well drada is the target uh this coming friday night what sort of game are you expecting here mickey uh, I'm expecting goals actually. I'm just expecting goals, you know, with uh, Chris Lyons obviously and uh, young Mark Doyle for Drogheda and obviously with Harps own uh, firepower with Alan Foley. I'm expecting goals because actually that's the kind of thing Harps have kind of been caught on the double edged sword kind of thing because they're going a little bit, and I like to say the word little bit when we're talking about Ollie Horgan here, a little bit more expansive. They, they have leaked a few more goals than they, they probably, they, obviously, they would have liked. And Drogheda is the same, you know, they've gone away, you know, they obviously play expansive football, Drogheda, um, and they play a nice brand of football. So I, I expect goals, I actually, I can, I'm obviously tapping harps for the one, but, you know, I think it's going to be a 2-1. I really can see, you know, uh, a goals in the game. Hopefully I'm right. Yeah, and there is the, the carrot, I suppose, dangling as well. It's a battle for fourth uh, so early in the season. Drogheda just ahead by a point of Harps. Harps will go back into that position if they get the full three points this coming weekend, Mickey. Yeah, it's a great opportunity, obviously, with Harps going to uh, Waterford on Monday. Uh, it's, a, it's a massive opportunity, and obviously the players uh, will just fully focus on the job tomorrow night. Um, but it's a real opportunity to, you know, pull back uh sligo actually if, if you you know if you can leapfrog uh, johada and you can get you know on the tail of sligo obviously they're going really well and stay and stay you know stay as close as you can for as long as possible you know it's it's, it's exciting it's going to be a, it's a good going to be a good game you of course have worked under various managers uh, mickey is that something ollie horgan you think is telling his players listen we get three points here all of a sudden you could find yourself yourself chasing down third in sligo Absolutely not. That's the last thing Ollie will be saying. Ollie will be telling them to look out for the boys below. The knock are coming. That's what Ollie will be saying. I, I can't see Ollie Horgan <laughs> ever getting too carried away talking about European football or anything like that. No, that's definitely something Ollie will not be saying anyway.
Yeah. Uh, the squad for Harp was definitely going to be tested uh, this time around, Mickey, because we've got a game. Draw it a Friday, Monday Waterford, and then Sligo, then the, the, the following weekend. Harps have improved with their squad, but in a period like this, particularly as we are now into the thick of the second run of games, it's really, really going to be tested, isn't it? Yeah, it is going to be a test of Harps squad, and uh, obviously Ollie uh, um, likes to do things unknown, so there will be a change tomorrow night that we will probably won't foresee, because Ollie likes to do that. He likes to do that with other managers, you know, keeps Tim Clancy on his game that way, so there'll definitely be a change tomorrow night. We're thinking of going to Waterford, because Ollie's, uh, you know, when I'm working with him, he's a percentage manager. He'll know his chance of getting the three points uh, percentage wise will be in Waterford. So I actually see him probably holding back. We'll say his his better players or his players are in better form for the Monday game actually. But in saying that, you know, uh, Harps have uh, Mark Tamlin coming back there who has obviously been out. <clears throat> excuse me with that horrendous injury. So he, you know, he's got a little bit of game time. So I can probably I would like to see him start tomorrow night because it might bring a little bit of freshness into the squad uh, aiming for Monday. You know, and Harps have a big squad. Like, there's players like Tony McNamee's, you know, game time's been, you know, few and far between. And Tony's performances when he's been on the pitch has been excellent. So, Harps do have a decent depth in squad. You know, uh, like, young Stephen Doherty's been in there. He's done really, really well. He's kind of, because, I'd say, Mark Coyle and Brian McNamee have been going so well. And Adam Foley, he's kind of hasn't got the plot as he deserves. But he's been going really, really well. And, obviously, he's, been, he's come through the academy. So, you know, he's he's one we'll be trying to flag for the future to keep him a number you know, of in, thoughts. A number of injuries there, obviously, f for Ollie. Uh, Johnny Dunleavy is one, Stephen Follin. Uh, we've also got a big cost, Kosovar Siddiqui, who's also on the injured list. But if he can get back for a game or two now, um, Kosovar Siddiqui would be a huge, huge benefit to the defensive harps, wouldn't he, Mickey? Yeah, he's been a man out and he's come in, and I think his leadership and everything. And I think just because he's so big, his presence gives him so much confidence, you know. So obviously, if, if you could get him, uh, you know, fit. That would be a big plus for Ollie because Ollie likes a, a settle back four. That's something you know he won't change unless he unless he needs to change. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he's fit. Yeah. What would Ollie be looking for out of the next three games? Obviously, you would say Mickey nine points would be nice. But but what's the realistic target out of the next three? Do you feel? Uh, the realistic target, I suppose. Uh, I would love nine points, but realistically, you know, you're looking for two ones and a draw. Really, would be. Would be what you want to do obviously uh if you could get a you know maybe a draw tomorrow night that keeps you right on draw this cusps and then get the one and a, and a derby game i'd love to see us go you know uh beat sligo at home so you know what i mean because uh they're going really well with such a confidence booster but at the same time there's no reason harps can't aim for nine points like obviously the players can only take it one game at a time but uh you know, I'd, lo I'd love us to see his aim for nine points, but really, if you get two ones and a draw, I think that would probably over the three games be like maximum return. Ollie would be delighted with that, you know. Yeah, let's look at the other games. Uh, Derry City away from home against uh, Waterford on Friday night as well. Um, Michael, uh, Derry sitting in the bottom three in the table, but Rory Higgins knows if they get. Uh, a result down there tomorrow night that is going to open up a bit of daylight between them and the bottom club is what they really, really want to avoid. Yeah, everybody's saving grace really is that Waterford's going really, really poorly and obviously with all the controversy down there, they're just not in a good place. Uh, so, no, obviously we're worried about down there looking for maximum points to give them that little bit of breathing space. Uh, you know, but Longford are, are, are decent are decent as well uh, and they'll not hopefully let Derry get too far away. But no, I, that should be, um, you know, this. But when you're in that difficult situation like Rory is, and you've come in, and he's got a, he's got really good results since he's come in. You know, he's only been beat by Harps, but uh, and obviously he got a, a really good draw last week against Shamrock Rovers. And to be honest, Shamrock Rovers equaliser uh, how it stood. Uh, I don't think anybody knows if they were not top of the league and champions. Uh, definitely for me, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't have. Uh, I definitely wouldn't have stood because like the ball went out at the, at the dugouts and he nearly took a, a throw on it, the eighteen yard box. So uh, I don't know how Rory actually kept his composure and stayed on the pitch because I know if I was manager for Derry, I definitely may, uh, would have lost the cool. But no, uh, he's got them in a good place. They're going well. They're a young side, but they're playing decent football, Derry, you know, and, you know, they have goal scorers among their ranks. Yeah, just need more goals. So they do. Uh, what about Sligo? Longford Town's the opposition for them on, on Friday. Uh, you would expect Sligo to come through this one, Maggie. Yeah, you want it with uh, form of Sligo are showing at the moment. You would definitely, uh, 
you know, expect them to come through against Longford. Longford are going well. Um, you know, they lost the Bulls last time out, but Longford are a decent side too, and they've got a couple of players that have been around the league for a while, so they they know what it takes just to kind of hang in there, and, you know, they'll probably, if they get anything out of this game, is from Longford point of view, it'll be a bonus. Uh, but as for Sligo, like, I just think Sligo have too much. They've started off uh, really well in Buckley, experienced manager. He's got a nice blend of youth and experience in that Sligo team, you know, and uh, I just think, that obviously, with the start they've had, they've just got really good momentum, so I can't see I can't see anything else other than a one for Sligo. Yep. Even though the table doesn't reflect this, St. Patrick's Athletic v. Bowes, Dundalk v. Shamrock Rovers, uh, probably four of the top five clubs uh, in, in the country, but two real mouthwatering clashes to see how these ones fare out on Friday night, Mickey. I uh, know it's, it's a good weekend for fixtures, you know, because, like, you know, as obviously we said Hearts against Drogheda, you know, are tailing each other, and obviously the, the standard fixture probably everybody will be looking at is Rovers, Dundalk. Uh, Dundalk, obviously, you know, are, are down the table, but with the squad of ha- players they have, I... I like usually after 10 games, you would know roughly that's where teams are going to be. That kind of sets the total for you. But I, I can see, obviously, I can see Dundalk uh, pushing off. Uh, I know they've steadied the ship down there now a little bit. Uh, you know, when they came back, actually, after playing really poorly in the first half, from their point of view against Harps, and got a draw uh, and played some good stuff in, in the second half, as you would expect from the players they have. No, I expect that one to be, you know, t- to be a really interesting thing. I probably it'll probably be a board one all draw or something, but hopefully yeah. we get goals. Yeah, hopefully so. Hopefully we'll see plenty of goals o- over the weekend. So we will, Mickey. Uh, just finally, then once again, you're tipping a harps one Friday. Yeah, I'm tipping a harps one on Friday. You know, as I said, hopefully there'll be goals in it because the two teams have goals kind of uh, all over the pitch. If you know what I mean, well, harps will rely on Alan for a bit. You know, I can see them in goals, you know, as I said, Mark Doyle, and they're going well for uh, Johanna. So, no, I'm, I'm tapping a harsh one. And hopefully there's goals and the harsh one. It'll be a good night at the office. Hopefully so. Mickey Funston, thanks for joining us on Early League of Ireland Chat.